Hi, and welcome to this video build log of the A1 Sky Raider. The Sky Raider is built by StarMax, and you can find it under a number of brands. This one's from Banana Hobby using their Blitz RC Works. The A1 Sky Raider also has a very active users thread on RC groups that we'll be referring to a couple of times during the build. There's a lot of good information there that you're going to want to know. Now the A1 Sky Raider is one of my favorite airplanes. It was built in the late 40s and flew in foreign air forces up until the middle of the 80s. In the United States it was probably best known for its action in the Vietnam War and that's where I saw it as a young a young person watching the news and, and reading newspapers, it was not uncommon to see the Sky Raider in action. The Sky Raider comes in two different color schemes, the gray with the Navy colors and the Air Force flew gray Sky Raiders as well, uh, plus a combat configuration with uh, a couple of different colors of green and tan in the, co um, the camouflage version. Now the Sky Raider is probably um, best known as its role, in its role as an attack airplane and it was um, one of the biggest single engine airplanes to ever fly off an aircraft carrier and it was very popular in the attack role because it flew s slow allowing the pilots to see through the jungle to be able to attack their car targets. It also held a huge amount of armament with seven hot points on each of its wings plus a long loiter time that allowed it to stay in the area um, to, to keep the, the enemy's heads down. One of the things that the A1 is best known for is leading rescue operations for downed airmen. Leading a group of several helicopters and perhaps some high-level, fast-moving uh, attack aircraft, the A1 could get in uh, and s support the recovery of downed airmen. In that role, it used a call sign called Sandy, and so you'll often see the A1 referred to as a Sandy. That's that A1 call sign that they used when they were flying rescue missions. In fact, one of my favorite stories of the A-1 is a rescue mission where a guy by the name of Major Bernie Fisher landed an A-1 on about a 2,500 foot unimproved dirt strip strewn with wreckage of other airplanes, taxied to the end, whipped the airplane around for another airman who jumped up from behind some barrels, dived into the cockpit, and took off. For that action, Major Fisher earned the Medal of Honor. Now this A1, as you can see, is not the twin engine or the twin cockpit uh, model that Fisher used, but it was a very popular configuration for the attack airplanes. Well, enough about that. Let's talk about this model. It's got a 63 inch wingspan, 48 inch length. It comes with a 70 amp electronic speed control and it's programmed to run on a 14.8 volt, that's a four cell LiPo battery and it recommends the 3200 uh, milliamp size. The motor it comes with is a 42 by 58 uh, 400 kV motor and it swings a four bladed 17 by 6 prop. Well, let's break into this and see what the model looks like. As you can see, I've got the Sky Raider unboxed. Everything came in its own plastic bag and it was put together quite nicely in the foam shipping container. Much of it was taped down and so digging it all out and taking it out of its uh, plastic bags took, took just a couple of minutes. I'm looking at the finish on, these mo on this model and it is very nice. The paint job is great. Um, the decals are applied very nicely and there's a lot of good detail on it. One of the interesting things about this, as you can see, it is a big model. My goodness, it's just got a nice size to it. It's got speed brakes that retract out of the sides and into the bottom, and the uh, access to the uh, insides is through this hatch right here on the top. And so uh, we'll get a chance to pull that out here just briefly. You can see that. And so you've got nice access with a nice um, large speed control there in it, along with several of the large servos for some of the, the flight controls and, of course, battery access. The other thing, of course, is the wings. The wings are modeled nicely. They've got the, uh, the round L's pointed in the right direction. Sometimes you see that uh, where they get the decals on backwards. The, um, the flaps, are um, servos are there. The extensions for the uh, electric retracts are also there, along with the uh, servo for the aileron. And those are all then coming out at the end of the wing and are appropriately labeled. 
the, uh, the flaps are there. They're mounted with uh, kind of nylon hinges here, uh, flat flush against the surface, and then the ailerons are mounted with pin-type hinges that go into the foam. We'll have to be mounting our own uh, control horns uh, and then setting up the, um, the servos for that. And so both sides of the wings look, look very nice. The tail is right here, and it again, it's got the pin-type hinges, it's uh, free. One of the things I'm going to be doing is checking the security of all these things before I start, or as I start working uh, the assembly to make sure that that's done. And really the only damage that this particular model got is a little bit of ding on the foam right here in that one of the pins that are used to rotate the gear as it retracts fell out of the gear and punched its way out of the bag and ended up denting the uh, foam there. So all in all, uh, it came through in pretty good shape, a little bit of filler and a little dab of paint and I ought to be able to get that so no one will see it. One of the other interesting things about this model is that it primarily bolts together and so there's not going to be a lot of glue or epoxy and that kind of thing. And so as you can see, uh, it should go together quite nicely. And then last but not least, the final part of the empennage, uh, and it's got this very nice um, uh, painting of the, um, of the bee uh, coming off of the, um, what it has, the aircraft carrier's name printed on the side of it here, the USS Ar Ariskany, uh, which it was a model that I built as a child. So uh, familiar with the Ariskany and the fact that it spent some time off the coast of Vietnam during the time that this airplane would have been uh, flying in that area. So all in all, it looks like it's in a, in a very uh, good position. Uh, if you look on Google Images, you can see this one's got the big number 500 uh, on the nose. And you can see uh, pictures of this actual airplane if you do a little bit of searching. It does have some images of the inside of the cockpit there on the, on the cockpit itself. And then of course over here we've got the canopy and it uh, has a nice fit and it'll um, be very nice as we finish up putting that together. So we've got the big stuff put away back in their bag so uh, they don't end up with some hanger rash as we put this together. But let's take a couple minutes to look at the small parts pack. Now this is the P&P, I thought I would refer to plug and play version of the model. Uh, and, and I was a little surprised to find that it came with a 2.4 uh, transmitter. Again, you can see the StarMax brand on the transmitter, so you know that it's a StarMax model, along with an eight-channel receiver. Um, I was planning to use my own radio and my own receiver, so uh, that'll go in the spare parts kit or perhaps to a uh, um, swap shop. In any case, They've got a very nice propeller. We mentioned that before. It's got the decals on the propeller and the, the nice paint or the decals uh, on the tips on this propeller and it feels pretty sturdy. Uh, the, the, the mounting kit for the propeller uh, onto the motor is right there. And so we can see that we've got a bunch of bombs all individually wrapped and then of course uh, a heavy heavier um, uh, wing tank kind of uh, configuration that would go on one of the hard points. Uh, and then in the center uh, with magnets on it is a large center drop tank. And so that's uh, also included here with the kit. Uh, I've showed you the canopy top already. There's a bag of extensions and uh, Y cords that you're going to be need that will be needing. Uh, this small bag has got the uh, extensions for the guns that'll glue into the receptacles on the leading edge of the wing. Um, all of the connectors uh, and clevises for the control surfaces are here in this bag along with a, a wide variety of screws and a couple of different sizes of Allen wrenches. And then of course the landing gear um, and the landing gear covers and so they are uh, here and they all look like they're in pretty good shape. They've got some mounting screws and wire uh, associated with them too and I think that wire is probably going to be the pull-pull part of the tail wheel uh, steering that we'll be uh, installing here as we put the model together as well. And then uh, last but not least uh, again, uh, some mounting brackets here. Uh, it looks like they're going to fit on the foam where the landing gear bolt in. So all in all, we're in pretty good shape. The instructions, we've got those here, and uh, they're pretty typical. They're primarily uh, 
uh, photo instructions and so we'll be taking a look at those here in just a minute before we start the assembly so we know what is going to be happening with that and then this um, um, piece of plywood that was in there and I'm assuming that's going to be part of the support for the wings but we'll look at the instructions and find out. So that's it for this part of the build log for the Star Max or in this case Blitz RC A1 Sky Raider. <laughs>